Hello, Ven. I hope you are doing well. This is a quick guide on how to complete the corrupted Nightfall on Grandmaster difficulty. I will first show you our loadouts, followed by the strategies. Time sums are in the description below. This Grandmaster contains overloads and unstops. The shields are solar, arc, and void, with a threat also being arc. At the time of recording, the surges were stasis and solar. This could be different for you, depending if you do a GM on the week it comes out or later on for your Conqueror title. So, always double check where the surges are and match your subclasses and weapons to them. Moving on to class loadouts, we had a warlock running well for survivability combined with Phoenix Protocol to get super energy point getting kills inside the well. The Titan ran Sentinel Shield for our control combined with Ursa Furiosa Gauntlets to regain super energy and create orbs of power. The Hunter ran Mobius Quiver for clearing ads along with obvious rigs for an extra tether shot. For weapons, we had a warlock running Riptide for unstops and the Monarch for stunning overloads along with Linear for damage. The Titan ran Outbreak Prime for stunning overloads and a blinding grenade launcher for ads combined with a Linear for boss damage. Finally, the Hunter ran a hand cannon for stunning unstops and Divinity for stunning overloads followed by a Linear for DPS. Now to Mars stunning with a class item. Run any of the mods to help reduce your ability cooldowns using different abilities or run powerful attraction to collect nearby orbs. You could also run the mods proximity ward and healthy finisher to get health back along with an overshield when performing a finisher. For leg armor you can run mods to help with your ability regen when picking up orbs of power. You could also run scavenger mods to pick up additional ammunition when picking up ammo bricks. For your chest armor run a cook as a dampener to help reduce incoming damage from grenades. Also run an arc resist mod because incoming arc damage is increased by 25%. For gauntlets, run any mods that boost your ability regen or create orbs of power. Finally, for the helmet, I suggest you have a heavy ammo fighter mod on along with some ashes to assets to get you super back on grenade kills. These are the loadouts that we used. Either copy them or use them to make your own designs. You do not need the same loadouts, subclasses or characters that we have to complete this GM. With that out of the way, let's get straight into it. Once you spawn in, there'll be an overload champ spawning in front of you. Take it out and then use your sparrows to travel to the right side of a map by following this path. This will allow you to bypass all the ads in the middle and get straight to the mini boss at the back of a room. Move your sparrows out of the way so if they get destroyed they won't kill you. Then focus on killing the boss to get out of the way. You can skip and just head straight to the next encounter or stay and kill the two overloads amongst the ads. It will take longer but I suggest you stay here and kill the two overloads for two reasons. One you may need the revives and two it is good to charge your supers up for the elevator room. When you are ready proceed to the elevator room and take out the scions around you. There is a little cheese that you can do here. If you line yourselves up like this, you can throw the orbs to one another and make a pile on the ground so you can break the shields on the adds much quicker. Throwing it once is enough to charge it up fully to break a shield, but we are throwing them twice because the second throw makes the orbs last longer on the ground. Therefore, they are less likely to despawn. Once you are ready, one person starts, then two people pick up the orbs whilst the third uses their super to clear the adds. That way, as soon as the main boss is spawned, you can instantly take the shields down. Whatever you do, do not kill the main Taken boss. Leave it alive and have one person distracted and destroy the darts it sends out. Meanwhile, the other two make the next pile of orbs. Same as before, two swaps. Make sure to make the pile somewhere near the back because the sides of the elevator will have Taken goo on the ground. One's ready, kill the boss. Two people pick up the orbs whilst the other uses their super to clear the next set of adds. Careful of the rotating blights in the middle of the room as they will kill you. When the elevator stops, you will have to deal with an unstopped jump and some knights. Focus on clearing the Acolytes and then the Unstopped Champ. The Knights can be left alone for now because they will retreat when the Unstopped dies. The Shrieker above can be a problem, but if you stand on the edge of the elevator, it will open up and won't be able to shoot you. This way you can destroy it from afar. Get rid of any surviving Knights in the next area and then stay amongst these Gardens at the top. There will be two Unstopped Champs for you to deal with here. Use the high ground to deal with the first one and then try to lure the second one over to you. Don't go too far up because there are Shriekers everywhere. Amongst the unstops will be some knights, but most of them can be shot from the front of the area. When the unstops are dead, have one person use the cover around them to get close to the shriekers. Their job is to be a decoy whilst the other two shoot the shriekers. You are now in the ogre room. There is a cheese you can do here to help you bypass most of the ads, but if you want platinum, then here is how to get it and do the cheese. For the cheese, you need to kill the hive ogre first, and then the taken one. You'll be constantly teleported between the two realms, so if you don't kill it right away, then wait to be teleported back in. When the Hive Ogre dies, you will remain permanently in the Taken Realm where you will need to kill the Taken Ogre. By doing so, you will despawn all the minor adds and champs in both realms. However, if you want Platinum, you won't be doing the cheese just yet. First, you will need to kill a Hive Unstop and two Taken Unstops. The best way we found was to simply stand on the left or the right side balconies and kill a few adds. This is enough to lure the Unstops towards you, but you will need to be careful during teleportation in case one of them is standing next to you on the other side. 
make sure you are on the edge of a balcony so you don't get stomped. When the unstops die, then implement the cheese to bypass the rest of the ads. There will be three taken shriekers left in the taken room, but you can use the pillars on the stairs to get close and then either turn invisible or sprint into the portal. Once on either side, the ads in the main room will be gone, so fall back and wait. Through the gates will be thrall and two unstops. The thrall will stay here, but you can lure the unstops out of the room and into the main one to make them easier to kill. For this next area, you will have a sniper far left and right. In the middle will be two unstopped champs and even more thrall. Instead of having the unstops rush you up the stairs, jump onto the left side ledge and kill the sniper there. From here, you can look down below at the unstops and shoot them from above. The sniper that is usually on the far right will rotate around towards the middle, but otherwise all the ads will stay in this one location. Then you will need to kill two overloads, one in the back left and right sides of the room. You can take the left one out first by using the ledges on the left, whilst the one on the right can be killed from the middle. There is a mini boss here, but you don't need to waste time or ammo on it. Simply turn invisible or run all the way right or left to avoid it and into the portal at the back. For the jumping puzzle, you really only need to have one person make it through and the other two will be teleported. You can either jump straight down the middle and time it perfectly or jump onto the rocks to safely jump down. Once here, stay at the back and snipe the ads to your right. Amongst them will be an overload champ which you can leave for last. Below are a series of platforms but before you jump onto them, take out the ads and be careful of the stasis pools. They will suck you in and if you are on the edge, will throw you off the map. The next area can be a little difficult so have one person jump down to lure the ads in whilst the other two provide cover fire. There are invisible minotaurs on the left and right flanks but a lingering grenade draws them out. This next area contains two overloads and two snipers. Use the high ground to shoot down onto the first overload and for the second you can use the side walls and debris for cover to safely kill it. You are now in the boss room. In the past you were able to kill the boss here instantly using Linea's a tether and some thunder crashes. Although this can still be achieved, it isn't 100% guaranteed. One mistake or lack of ammo is all it takes for the boss to escape, so we will show you how to do it legit instead. First you will need to start it up by jumping onto the other side and then jumping straight back. You are going to want to use this back island for cover to kill all the ads. The broken pillar and debris is decent cover, but be watchful of the boss because sometimes on a direct hit, it will kill you even with all the mods and 100 resilience. When the ads die, have one person pick up the orb and swap it once. This will be enough to break her shields. Stay on the back island and begin damaging her. Even more ads will spawn here, so I suggest you save one super to help deal with them. Since they are all clustered onto the stairs, lingering grenades and supers are perfect for dealing with them. Try to stick to the back of the island if possible to avoid as much of the incoming damage as possible. From here you want to rotate to the back of the area. Just in case you don't kill the boss here, you will want to be by the portal for a quick escape. In our case we didn't have a lot of heavy ammo left, so perhaps running some Aeons on the team would help. Break her shields and damage her again. You want to damage her down to at least half health or more. As soon as the portal is open, jump through so you don't get rushed by ads. At this point you will need to complete it legit, so here is how you do it. Ahead of you will be an overload champ, some snipers and a knight. Use the pillars and debris around you for cover to safely deal with it. There is a pile of debris on the left that you can use to flank of the enemies. Over to the right side on the next island will be the boss and killing the knight will make her teleport away. Keep rotating up to the next area until you reach this last set of ads. Get the knight and snipers out first so that the unstopped champ is on its own for an easy kill. Also, be careful of where you are standing when your teammates are doing a finisher on one of the ads. You are now in the final part of the boss room, the last island before the boss has some debris on top of it. Use that for cover and send one person across to jump onto the main platform. This will spawn some ads in that you want to clear from the island before jumping onto the main area. The boss has a blight attack that is especially ruthless here. Whenever you hear it, sprint and slide but keep your feet on the ground. If you time it well, she won't throw you into the air and off the map. Again, pick up a charge, throw it once and break the shields. Throw everything you have at the boss because if you don't kill her here, you will be facing more ads and you will need to break her shield again. And there you have it, that's so how you can leave a corrupted nightfall on Grandmaster difficulty. If you have found the guide to be helpful, then please like, share, and post a comment. Don't forget to subscribe for more Destiny 2 guides. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.